Hello, welcome back to our channel, American Ultra Stock. Here we are again, a very exciting topic. You see it on Braden's background, you see it aside on the title. The US managed to tie with France, and this camp had a lot more than that. It's a lot more substantial and more meaningful than just the results. We are going to cover as well the U19s who had an impressive run against England. I know Buck definitely didn't enjoy that one and played in Morocco. So straight to the point, right in the first game, that was the least talked about one. It was a little bit harder to watch. We had to go on YouTube to watch it or the US soccer app. Not as mainstream. We beat Guinea, who could be our opponents in the Olympics. We beat them 3-0. Your main takeaways on the starting lineup, the first half, initial thoughts. Yeah, so like you said, I, I think initially just talking about the camp as a whole, I think it's good that we scheduled these friendlies with opponents that could be in our group. We know that France will be in our group. They're also probably the favorite for this tournament. And like you said, for Guinea, they will be in our group if they can manage to win their inter-confederational playoff against whoever the fourth Asian team is. Asia still has yet to do their qualification for the Olympics very, very late. For them to do that but it is what it is we, we can only assume what's in front of us so a good friendly schedule first off the starting lineup against guinea it was clearly a very rotated team it looks like the majority of them were the b side with a couple of the core starters where you'd expect the center backs the midfield but overall i like the fact that some of the backups were given a chance especially since it is a more inferior opponent uh, and then just getting into the game, there was a couple standouts, uh, a couple specific plays that I have highlighted. Uh, Busio played a really, really good ball to Griffin Yao, took his opportunity and put in a great cross for Nathan Harriel, of all people, up at striker. Uh, it was a great header from Harriel to finish, a little looping one. The keeper had no idea what to expect. Uh, and Harriel already proving that he's a better striker than Johan Gomez in this camp, despite being a right back. So nice to see from him, who is a player who's definitely on the verge of the roster. There's definitely a chance he doesn't make it. So to see him get up here and, and score a goal, uh, and albeit maybe not the most important of the games, but it's still a nice thing for him to really stake his claim for a spot on the roster, especially considering Reynolds' performance was so-so against France. We'll get more into that later. And then on the second goal, uh, it's kind of the same players. Griffin, Yao, and Busio again. Busio wins uh sorry griffin Yao actually won the ball from a guinea center back they took too long in the back trying to play out of it good pressure from Yao wins the ball back falls perfectly to busio he has a one-on-one -on -one and easy composed finish which some of our players as we saw against france wouldn't have finished that chance so props to busio and props to Yao again i thought he was absolutely excellent in this game and it's him again actually on the third goal a good cut inside for him a, a pretty solid shot on target it was never going in realistically pretty routine save from the keeper but it spilled out to johan gomez who i just slammed it a little bit got a nice tap in not the most impressive of goals but he was in the right place at the right time and that is part of being a striker so props to him as well he's another one who has an uphill battle to make the final roster so nice to see him on the score sheet uh, and then Cade Cowell and Duncan McGuire coming in off the bench both missed easy one-on-ones. Like I mentioned with Busio, there's some players on the roster who can't finish one-on-ones. And Cowell and McGuire definitely didn't help their case in that particular stance. Lucky for Cowell, he made up for it a little bit later in the camp. Uh, but yeah, another thing for Cade that I wanted to mention is his crosses were also not great. I think maybe the fact that he has been with the A-team in the past is kind of a detriment to him because he, he has Greg Ball in his brain a little bit. He tried to put in some crosses. None of them were that great, honestly. And I don't think outside of the first goal, no, no, no success came from crosses. And that was really kind of a fast break. It was a great ball to Yao who crossed it immediately. There wasn't much time for the defense to react. But overall in the game, I think I've already touched on the players, but the key standouts from this one, Griffin Yao taking his chance and absolutely flying with it. This is the only time he's been included in Olympic camp, and it's the final one before I think the official roster is announced. There will be a, a prep camp in the summer before the Olympics do start with, I believe, the overage players there, and I'm pretty sure that will be the final roster for the Olympics. So this was his last and only chance to cement himself in the roster, and I think with this game and what he did against France as well, we'll get into that. He definitely cemented himself with a, uh, with a spot on the roster, maybe even a starter, who knows. Uh, it's hard considering the winger depth, but 
I think he really showed out. He took his chance and ran with it, which is very nice to see. And Busio as well. I think he's kind of well locked for the roster. We already knew that him and Tessman have been the core of the midfield forever for Venezia, as well as the U23 team. Busio was even the captain for the very first camp that we had uh, before we ended up switching over to Tessman. And I thought he was excellent here, albeit against the worst of the two opponents. I thought he had a good game, good distribution, and a composed finish as well, which is something you don't necessarily need from a center mid, but it's a nice bonus quality to have. So those are my main takeaways from the Guinea game. Yeah, I, I think I completely agree with you. I, I think that one of the things that you mentioned is very important when people start hyping up Cade because he got a crucial goal. I'm partially a fan of Cade. I think that there is a lot of athleticism there, a lot of will, honestly. He is brave on the ball. We have to, there's no denying that. He's very direct, but the end product is atrocious at times. At times you, you get a nice uh, result, but at times, most more often than not, you get a wasteful cross or a terrible finish. But there is something there, and he proved it in the second game. A lot of changes to the second game. The one that I will say caught my eye the most and, and in a positive impact was Schulte on goal. I thought he was very, very composed under pressure. The, the French uh, team would do a high press and he would more often than not do really well with very accurate passing. There are no stats for people to, or to back up my argument for people to check, but I'm pretty sure he didn't miss a single of his long balls. So that was very impressive. I want to go over to you. What do you think when comparing, obviously we are against France. That was the, the marquee game of this preparation camp. We put the, I think, what uh, Mark uh, probably thought, Mitrovic probably thought was the most, was well, the strongest lineup. And would you agree with that? What are the players that you think didn't really respond in that second game, Brandon? This starting lineup against France, like you said, is the most of a preview for the Olympic starting lineup as we're gonna get until the roster is announced. Obviously the three overage players should in theory come in and take three of those spots from the starting lineup. Not sure what the point of having an overage player would be if they're not gonna be a starter for the main team when we go up against France in the Olympics, who will be our far and away hardest opponent within the group stage and maybe even in the whole tournament, depending on how the draw turns out. Uh, but yeah, like you said, Schulte in particular, him coming in over Brady, I expected it, especially since Brady wasn't initially on the roster, only getting added after his former fired teammate Selena had to withdraw due, due to an injury or maybe uh, Orpen threatened him uh, at gunpoint, which is possible because they don't seem to like releasing him for the camps. But regardless of the situation, Schulte came in. Uh, Selena probably should be the starter for this group, but I think Schulte made the most of his opportunity as well. He was very solid, conceded two goals, but I mean, one of them was a penalty. You can't really do much about that. And the second one, I think as well, really not on him. And I think he was very composed considering the situation. Move on to the defenders. I mentioned Brian Reynolds briefly. I still think he's the certified starter for this group. I, I don't think he did anything in this game to disprove that. I just don't think he was necessarily as good as he could have been. I thought there was a couple of moments on the ball where he was uh, a little suspect. He got into some interesting positions and kind of failed to capitalize, leaving us potentially vulnerable to a very exper uh, experienced France team despite their youth. But it didn't really seem to matter, to be honest. But I think maybe in the higher level, some mistakes like that could be caught out. Maybe we'll see that uh, at Westerlo pretty soon. But honestly, I don't think it's really anything to write home about for the Reynolds performance. Tolkien as well, it's a kind of a similar situation on the left side. Not the best of games, but again, he's a certified starter for the left back spot. I don't think Wiley's done anything to get over him. There's a couple other players who are eligible. I mean, hell, even, even Christopher Lund from the A team is technically Olympic eligible. I don't think there's any way he's at this camp, but he'd definitely start over Tolkien. There's still Jogo, Jonathan Gomez, who could probably be released, but I think the fact that he's been at none of the camps probably means they won't even consider him for the roster just because he doesn't really know the system or have chemistry with the players or anything like that, except for, I guess, his brother. But I don't think Johan will make the final roster anyway. Uh, nothing against him. I just don't think there's a spot for him there. I will get into the final roster a little bit later in the video. But yeah, uh, another defensive performance, the last one I really want to touch on is Max Dietz. I've been saying his praises for so long now on the channel. Uh, he kind of became my new Tyler Binden after Binden ended up committing to New Zealand. Uh, and I think he's much better. Very, very good performance. Everyone was singing his praises. And I think people are starting to finally catch on to how good Dietz is. Uh, I'm hoping that some of them learned from our channel, hopefully. But I, I think he was very solid. Definitely the best defender in the game. And he looked 
completely on the pace, even though he is a second Bundesliga player. And a lot of the players from the France team, if not all of them, are playing in first divisions, whether it's Liga, Bundesliga, everywhere else within Europe. They're all playing top five leagues and getting substantial minutes. And he didn't look out of place at all. He looked like he completely belonged to the level, which shows a lot of promise for his future as probably a Bundesliga center back, maybe even as soon as next year, and a potential spot on the USMNT in the future, because we all know how bad our pool is for the center back position. Now, pushing up the pitch a little bit, Busio had a great game against Guinea. I thought it was less so against France. I think some of his weaknesses were really put on uh, show, especially his fitness towards the end of the game. I'm sure you, Yuri, can touch on that a little bit more since you watch him more week in, week out as a Venezia fan. But I don't know. I think it wasn't his best game. His teammate, Tessman, on the other hand, world class. We'll talk about the first goal after we went down 2-0. Amazing response late in the game to fight back and get a draw against, like I said, probably the favorites to win the Olympics, especially if they do end up getting Mbappe for that team, which would be very worrisome for our defense in the summer. But we're not worried about that right now because he's not on the team. Uh, Tessman starting the goal for Yao, playing a beautiful, beautiful long ball. Just world-class uh, ability and range to Yao. Brings it down well. Yao cuts inside. And it's just uh, too easy. A signature Griffin Yao scores a goal, gets us back in the game. Both games, he was excellent, even in limited minutes. In the second one, it showed that before the game, Mitrovic, and at least before the camp, Mitrovic didn't see him as a starter, even a French player on the roster. I think he's played his way into the conversations now to start on the right wing, especially due to some bad performances or worse performances from some of our other wingers. I thought Paredes and Esmir. Uh, Esmir was a sub in this game, but even against Guinea, I thought in general those two performances in this camp were not great, which is a little surprising from Paredes, who was with the A team for the last camp, the last A-team camp against Trinidad and Tobago, both legs. I don't think it was the most promising of performances. His spot on the roster is safe. Esmir's might not be. I think maybe after seeing how he did against some better opponents, maybe it's best to just keep him with the U-20s for this cycle. Because I think if he is there, he'll be the best player on the team. And I think that U-20 team could make a deep run in the World Cup in 2025. But getting on to the second goal, we'll give Cade Cowell the respect he deserves after maybe getting being a little too harsh on him for the first game just uses his faith in us athleticism as always cuts inside same side as well i might add so france whoever the right back is i think it's sildilia from freiburg i believe he's might have some problems when it comes to the actual olympics going up and start wingers both goals coming from that side he cuts in gets a little lucky with the deflection i don't know if it would have gone in without that but a goal is a goal. He got in the situation, took the shot. It didn't seem to be too bad of a shot because I think it was on target regardless. Gets the goal. We come back 2-2. Cade Cal doing what he does best, in my opinion, being a super sub. The amount of pace he has off the bench and how direct he is, I think, could be a real problem to tired legs. I think that's how he should be used in general for the Olympic team, maybe for the A team if he gets to that level one day. But, yeah, I think those are my main takeaways. And the last one, I mentioned McGuire a little bit earlier in, for the first game. Didn't really see much from him. He started this game, but I thought he was very ineffective. I thought Paxton Aronson playing in the 10 role was a lot more effective than him even going forward. He was man marked a lot, uh, just showing how good of a technical player he is. And I guess France ID'd on him. I mean, Thierry Henry clearly has a good eye for talent. Maybe he knew that Paxton could be a danger man and Maguire couldn't be, but I don't think Maguire did anything this camp to solidify his spot as the starting striker, let alone be in the roster. And I think it's very, very likely that an overage player comes in and takes his spot as a result of that. Yeah, I, I would just say my main takeaways. So on the first half, I thought that, I'll be honest, I thought the token was horrible. Horrible. I, I have no other words to describe it. On the ball, which is uh, the area of the game that he should be flourishing, after he gets absolutely destroyed on the first attack by France, it, you could tell his confidence was, was gone a little bit. Uh, at times when we were trying to progress the play through that side and Paxton would have to come really, really close. And you don't want Paxton to be so far away from the, the area because that's he's the guy who's supposed to create. He had to come in and you could tell the guys pointing to Tolkien and directing him. And he started flir not flourishing, just doing what he should do. But uh, then lost possession a few times. And talking about losing possession, Aiden Morris. I mean, this is the type of game where we see where MLS perhaps really is because his stats on our league is they're insane. He has the best stats of all time, really, with our center, with our CDMs. 
he was really bad this game. I thought we could have definitely gone uh, gotten something right away when he missed that chance. Really stole a goal from Paxton. Paxton would have scored. And then a really bad on possession at times. Uh, good, honestly, I'll give him props for keeping the will and fighting throughout the game, the tenacity, because what we saw from Buzio, as soon as he had a, a bad, I saw someone in the comments saying it was the worst miss of all time. I don't think it's the worst of all time, but it, it was really bad to watch. Buzio was gone, honestly. And I've seen this time and time and again for Venezia, when he does something really bad during the game, he's gone and the arms start going up every time he loses the ball or he gets taken on and he doesn't track back after getting dribbled. So I thought that the midfield, when Jack McGlynn came on, it, it, we looked a lot better. It's no coincidence that we scored two goals. And actually for the first goal uh, with Tanner Tasman, it's McGlynn that gets the ball. He recovers the ball, passes it to Tasman. Tasman sends the long ball. I thought we looked a lot better. McGlynn did really well in the first game as well. I thought that Tasman was the what carried us throughout that first half uh, at times when keeping possession, sending the long ball. Spexton did really well to hold the ball. So I have her here, Tasman, McGlynn, Yao, obviously, and Paxton as the highlights of this game because although he didn't create much, he did create a good chance where if Buzio puts that away, it's a nice goal. And the other one for Maguire, that was a world-class play from Paxton on, on the wing and then Maguire really should put that away. I thought that Maguire alongside Morris and Tolkien, which is sad, three guys from MLS, were the main ones that I put as uh, players whose stocks went down. I, I don't think that either Gomez or Maguire have really a case for making the final roster uh, in terms of starting. One of them is going to make the roster, but sadly, and I'm really shocked, Gomez is probably ahead of Maguire. I thought he had a better performance in both games, really. I thought when he came on, he had more energy and Maguire was really off. So that propelled us to a tie uh, at the end with Cowell scoring. I'm really happy that we got something out of that game. We really should have maybe won that game. Honestly, it's not absurd to say that. And I'm happy that some of our guys who are supposed to be the core ones really stepped up. I'm happy that Tesman had a good game and a game like this. I'm happy that Yao had a really good game. You could tell his attitude as soon as he got the ball. And I'll give props to Esmir as well when he came on straight on it not really caring that they're playing friends just going forward going forward and trying to take on players and in that sense the last one that i'm going to mention right here negatively it's kevin paredes i thought that he was he wasn't on his best day really created one good chance for mcguire he just wasted it and uh that was it really paredes didn't really do anything else throughout the game but we got a tie so that, that's the very last camp that we're going to have for the Olympics. 3-0 uh, no win against Guinea, take it as you will. And 2-2 two, two tie against France, which before the game, not everyone gave us a chance. A lot of our own fans were saying we were going to get cooked. And we showed out there that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Obviously, they're going to have an overage player, maybe Mbappe. But hey, we're going to have overage players too. What if we have John Brooks, the, the amazing center back there? You never know if we can pull an upset. But jokes aside, I think this was a great camp. We're going to mention briefly the U19s because we won against uh, England. And also we had a game against Morocco, which was heavily rotated. What do you expect to see from that camp? If you want to say briefly the main takeaways, main players to watch, Braden. And also for you guys, viewers, if you're interested in this type of content, we have some important tournament coming up for the U20s on the cycle. We call the U19s on this one. But main ones that you think we should watch out for, Braden. Well, first, I'm just going to do main takeaways from the camp as a whole for the U23s. And like you said, they might have Mbappe, but we'll have Brandon Vasquez. So who's the real winner here? Uh, but yeah, uh, jokes aside, it's two good results against one team that we already know is in our group and another team that could likely be in our group. Uh, it's good to see how we fare against some of these teams that we will 100% be playing because in the end, we don't really know how the draw is going to turn out. Uh, I think. I mean, we have no idea who we'd play in the knockout stages, whether it be a difficult opponent, easy opponent, anything like that. So it's good to get uh, a sense of how we fare against the opponents that are more of a sure thing. Uh, I think the, ro the rosters have officially been cut to 18 with no alternates. They were 22 with uh, four alternates due to COVID uh, restrictions. But now that COVID is hopefully a thing of the past, we're back to 18, no alternates, which is kind of concerning for some of the players on the team because that seven cuts from this roster, assuming that all the under uh, all the overage players come in and take the spots and that there's no underage player that's not at this camp already that makes the roster, I think that's probably safe to assume. I don't think there's anyone. Actually, maybe Taylor Booth comes in and takes a spot, which would make it eight cuts. 
which is even worse for some of the players. I'll just quickly go position group by position group, see where we're at. Goalkeepers were great. Slanina, Schulte, Brady, whichever two of them make the final roster, I'm fine with. They all look very solid. And at least it's not someone like Celentano, who luckily is too old for this camp because I have no doubt that USSF would try to get him in there as another MLS guy. But the fullbacks uh, are a little concerning. Uh, I think, especially since we'll only have three for this game, most likely due to the 18 players in the roster, we'll only have one backup. And really, none of the players in this group have shown that they're good playing on both sides. Which, if you're only going to have one backup, you need someone to be able to play both sides. The only one who has done that is Harriel, and he's probably the most likely one to get cut out of the group because Tolkien and Wiley have been there the whole time. Reynolds is the solidified starter at right back. Not really looking great from the fullbacks, although maybe Kevin Paredes comes in and plays left back a little better, right back. Uh, center backs, not great necessarily, but I think considering the fact that we'll have one or two overage players there alongside Max Dietz, possibly Jalen Neal if he's back from injury, but probably not. And then maybe Tompkinson or Campbell, I think that should be fine. That's not the worst of our concerns, especially when we could be going up against wingers like Mbappe and we have people like Brian Reynolds and John Tolkien out on the fullbacks. That's probably more of a concern. Into the midfield, absolutely love the depth we have there. There's so many guys, even a couple that didn't even make this camp, that we can't go wrong with. You saw the depth. We got Tessman, Busio, McGlynn, even Morris if you want to count him, Paxton. There's even players who are injured right now like Kromaski. Atencio didn't make the camp. There's so many good players that we have so much depth. We're, we're fine there. Wingers is the same thing. I think it's going to be very interesting to see which ones make the final roster especially since there has been rumors that even Pulisic could come in and maybe play in the Olympics. He has said he wants to, and if he does, that turns the winger group probably to three out of the underage players, and I think we had five at this camp, and there's Taylor Booth coming back. That's a lot of cuts for a very talented group. Maybe I think Yao should be in there. Maybe Kate Cowell gets cut. Maybe, like I said, Esmir gets cut just to be with the U20s since there's a lot of talent there, and I think he could really thrive with that group. And then the strikers, this is a no-brainer. We've known this for a time. An overage striker is going to come in. Will it be Vasquez, Sargent, maybe even someone like Pepe? If he doesn't play a lot of Copa, that wouldn't even be an overage player, which could help. We don't really know. It'll be one of those guys. We have enough striker depth for that. So I think those are my main camp takeaways. Uh, see what yours are before we get into the U19s a little bit. Yeah, my main takeaway is we desperately need a striker. Again, I'm not copying any of the subs, but I'm happy that we align, We have visions that align here. We need a nine. Maguire, I had a lot of faith in him, but this showed that he couldn't really do it at the highest level. Main takeaway is we need a striker. We need a center back to someone to partner Dietz. I think that Tompkinson will go just based on the behind the scenes and the everyday uh, kind of vlogging that USYNT was doing. He seems to be very well liked by the, by the other players. Has a lot of experience as well, but I think we need an overage center back, an overage striker, and the next one really, in my opinion, should be another center back too, preferably. If we're trying to go for something significant here, try to go for gold, we need another one. The, the depth on the midfield is amazing, and I will say that I kind of haven't changed. I think that Morris, although he started this more important game, I'll have McGlynn there, and Griffin Yao has to make it. He's the most impressive one out of this entire camp, really. It was probably a Griffin Yao. I'll always back Tessman. I thought he was amazing against France, but I have to say, Yao was the star of this camp. Capitalized this chance. I mean, look at this. Two assists, uh, a goal against France. I mean, the guy did everything he could to earn a spot there. And uh, I just, that, that's what I think. I will say a hot take based on what you started with. I think a Schulte over Zlanina, that would be fine with me. I think that it was really composed on the ball. We see it time and time again, uh, like against Guinea and even against France and some players like Morris for us. Uh, mistakes happen at this level when trying to play under pressure. And I think that Zlanina is not the most comfortable with, with his feet. So I'll have Schulte actually. But now moving on to the U19s. Uh, we, it was really hard to watch. We had only a game for Morocco, which many people would have found really difficult to find a stream. But your main players to watch on that one, so we can briefly let the, the subscribers know. Oh, 100%. I think this is an age group that doesn't get as much attention, maybe because it is their first camp, uh, which definitely is a problem. The first camp should have happened a lot sooner, considering that our CONCACAF U20 championship is in the summer, which is also qualifying for the World Cup. And I believe, I don't think it is qualifying for the next Olympics, but the last one was. So it's a very important tournament for us, uh, especially to stake our claim again as the dominant powerhouse in the region. Winning at all levels is important. 
But yeah, a, a quick couple standouts from that camp. Like you said, we couldn't watch the game against England, which is a shame because the starters played in that game. The starting lineup against Morocco was a completely rotated team besides Diego Cochin, who I'll just start with him. I think he was the main t uh, standout from this camp from what I could tell. The fact that he's been at Barcelona, it shows uh, not only how good of he is as a shot stopper, but on the ball as well, his composure. Even when he was put into a couple of tough situations, I thought Ethan Kohler in particular put him into one pretty tricky one against Morocco, and he got out of it perfectly fine. Little shot fake or long ball fake, uh, I guess not really a shot fake from a goalkeeper, but to evade the Moroccan press. And I think, yeah, the Barca style of play has clearly had an impact on him. He's far and away our best goalkeeper uh, talent we have, including some of the guys on the Olympic roster. He's definitely one to watch. Another one that was very, very impressive as a center back, Noah Kai Banks. He was a standout from the U-17 World Cup back in, I think it was November, uh, in, in the fall last year. And I think he's already made his debut for Augsburg's second team as a 17-year-old. And I, honestly, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say he could be playing Bundesliga, or at least getting a little brief cameo like Damian Downs did this year, uh, maybe even next season. I think that yeah, that's how good of a talent he is at center back. He's big, he breaks lines very well, a good all playing center back, which is always important. Uh, he's, like I said, very developed for his age uh, physically. His physicality is great, especially at the youth level. I think his game translates super well. And again, I keep mentioning this every video we have, our center back pool is very poor in terms of talent for the future. Banks is one that we absolutely need to keep an eye on. Him and Dietz, I think, could potentially be the future of the center back position if it all goes to plan. He's super high on him. I can't honestly emphasize enough. A couple other ones. Cole Campbell is an obvious one. He made the switch from Iceland specifically for this camp, and it shows why. Two goals against England to give us the win in the Noel Be Buck Derby, where uh, we couldn't find any clips from him, probably because he ghosted for them. Hopefully, he isn't included in their camps in the future for their sake. Uh, he definitely won't be included in any of ours if the coaching staff knows what's up. But Campbell with two goals, he's clearly a cut above. He made his Dor Dortmund first team debut in a midseason friendly, although he does have some attitude problems, breaking the curfew there, already getting into a little bit of the aura, as we say. So maybe it's a positive thing, but he's clearly a super talented kid. He should be with Dortmund too, probably next season, and definitely another one to keep an eye on. And I think both of the strikers as well. Uh, that, they're the last thing I'll say. Obviously, there's a lot of talented players in this age group, including a lot, actually, that weren't at this camp. A lot of injuries or release issues. So our team for the U20 CONCACAF Championship in the summer should be even better than this one, which is very exciting to, to see. But obviously, there's a lot of talented players. Can't mention them all. The last one, I'll say, the strikers... Roger Garneri and Marco Zambrano both, I think, capitalized on their opportunities. Zambrano did score against England, the third goal that ultimately did give us the win with Campbell's other two. I think he was the second one of the game that Zambrano scored, and he was involved in the other goals as well, especially the first one with Campbell. He was heavily involved in that one. I think he took his chance, and the fact that he was starting over Neri was a little bit of a surprise, but Neri responded well in the second game against Morocco, had a great bicycle kick that almost went in, forcing a great save out of the keeper. I think our striker pool in the future with these guys, some of the other ones like Figueroa, Alex Staff, if we can swap him from Germany, has a, a lot to look forward to, as does the entire player pool as a whole. Absolutely. And if you guys enjoy an insight and a more laser focused uh, analysis of these players, please let us know in the comments below. Again, with the next time we're going to watch these guys is likely, it's not even announced, it's likely right before the Olympics. So this was the last final chance. So please let us know in the, comment, the comments below the guys that you thought cemented their spot. If you watch the games or not, if you watch the highlights, please look it up. You will definitely be able to find extended highlights at least 13 minutes or 15 minutes against friends. Make your own opinions as well. It's always better to, to watch it. So thank you so much. Make sure to leave a like, comment down below. Let us know what you thought. And we'll, we'll see you guys next time.